Valve has the worst kept secret of all time. They are making a game called Deadlock. Everyone knows this. Like, everyone knows this. We even t looked at the player numbers on SteamDB. You can literally see how many people are playing it. There it is, Deadlock, right here, right now. 22,000 people are playing it, right? But if you go on Twitch... Wait, what? People are streaming it? People are breaking the rules, but most of these people are Russian. So I guess they just don't care about the rules. Uh, I was going to say that no one's streaming it, but apparently some people are streaming it. You shouldn't be streaming it, but point is, this is Valve's worst kept secret, right? Everyone knows that this is happening. Um, and if you don't know, generally Valve has a policy based on what I've heard, and this is also a tweet right here. Uh, Valve and NDAs. I've, uh, I've been to Valve several times, including working from their office for a month. I in a casual chat with Gabe after his workout routine, he mentioned all their current projects and asked if we wanted to see them, all without signing an NDA. Granted, dev devil relations aren't the same as dev player or dev journalist, but I appreciate that it was just built on mutual trust. As for Deadlock slash Verge, uh, it mostly feels... Oh yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that situation. Uh, another person I can back this up with is... Um, I might be misremembering things, so don't take this as fact. But I'm pretty sure either Lewis or Pyrian of the Yogscast have also been to Valve offices and seen things that they're not allowed to talk about and they just don't talk about. Because that is how normal people think. If you see something that is not released, you shouldn't talk about it, even if you don't sign a piece of paper. That's how I approach things. I've said this before, if I ever, if I ever learn about anything, you're not hearing a peep of it. I would never leak anything because I'm a good boy. This person, however, they got an invite and made a whole article about it. And this is where we need to talk about the legality, uh, legality, and we need to talk about the ethics and morals. Because from a legal point of view, they did nothing wrong. Literally nothing they did is wrong in any way because the actual pop-up you get when you go into the game, it's not a legal obligation at all. It's basically just like from what I've seen, it, it, there's like a window of, um, of you're just not supposed to talk about it, like, pretty please, and that's it. It will never stop anyone because Valve is not interested in doing that. Like, this is a playtest. Of course they know it's gonna leak, right? But this person made a whole article about this, and, um, uh, made it clear that he didn't, uh, didn't sign an NDA or any written or verbal agreement, which, like, yeah, cool that you didn't, didn't make an agreement, but there's still, like, a, there's, there's, you know, like, a head nod agreement here. I received a no-strings-attached invite to play Deadlock on Steam. Steam claims the game is made by Valve. It is. It displays Valve's copyright logo when it launches, and is executable is digitally signed by Valve Corp. The game's directionaries contain... Sure, sure, sure. Though Valve didn't respond to my request, I, uh, I'm completely convinced that it's legit. Sure. Goes on to describe some aspects of the game. His piece also includes screenshots and starts looping GIF of a zipline mechanic. Sure. Still early in development. If Valve is concerned about leaks, why does it su uh, suggest invite your friends? All of this seems like mad cope, right? And in the end, in the very, very end, turns out Valve was not fine with me trying deadlock with friends. Hollister uh, added in an update to the article. I've been banned from matchmaking. Oh, well, please feel free to make fun of me in the comments. This is where we need to insert the narrator. People did indeed make fun of him. No one liked this. No one liked this. Literally, no one liked this. Uh, and this is this is where this happens, right? As for the deadlock verge situation, it mostly feels like a lack of clarity, sl uh, slight neglect from Valve, putting journalists in a weird spot where their usual respect for embargoes and DAs rubs up uh, against players, uh, usual non-respect for them, creating a lose-lose for journalists. But also, I don't think it's a strong neglect from Valve at all, or a severe breach of trust for Verge either. It's mostly just a somewhat weird situation. Now, I'm gonna be, I'm very much gonna be on the side of Valve, because I think in these situations, um, when you have a mutual understanding with journalists and with people doing tests, you don't, like, I think it's ridiculous to have everyone sign an NDA. I think so. I think people are grown adults and they know that when they're in some sort of test and in an enclosed space, and if there are no other reporters talking about it, the general understanding is that we don't talk about this. And that's it. And this whole situation seems like a... Like, hey, look at me, I got invited, and I'm gonna make an article about it. Even though I know that, that we shouldn't have happened, uh, shouldn't have done this. Because all of this is like, I didn't sign an NDA. Uh, Va why would Valve suggest inviting players? All of these seem like, um, uh, not explanations, but like justifications for what I am doing right now. I think this is a big L for The Verge. Big, big L. 
Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see the actual tweet. Absolutely bizarre uh, to see people at the verge about writing a, a game. Uh, other outlets have already written about. Numerous YouTubers and streamers have published videos of. Uh, no. Numerous YouTubers and streamers haven't published videos of this because literally no very big streamer or YouTuber has made a single video about it. Not one very major content creator who works with Valve games, even Counter Strike stuff like that, has made a video about it. That's why it has literally 300 viewers on YouTube. Uh, or Twitch, rather. So th this is not even true. Oh, they did they did ban him, yeah. I don't know if they vac ban him or just ban him. But whatever the case, I think this is a huge, huge, huge L. Me looking at an in informal NDA. And you know what this is? Like, this is going back to what I said about the NDA. Um, you didn't sign an NDA, but what you just did is you burnt your contact. The Verge, maybe this guy specifically, maybe The Verge, I think they've completely burned their contact at Valve. And the reason why I say that is because this happened with Kotaku. I think there is like a degree of, um, of like journalistic responsibility, I guess, is the best way to say it. Is when leaks and things happen that shouldn't be happening. Realistically, yes, you should serve the public and talk about the news. But at the same time, you must also remember that you are a vehicle for the company bringing these news, right? So I think that is always like a uh, like a very fine uh, fine line people need to walk between serving readers and viewers or serving also like good friends at the company who want to make sure that it's like a mutually beneficial um, transaction, right? I see you in the chat saying I have no sympathy for jur uh, journals getting bad. I don't think so. I think journalists can be really, really good. There are a lot of journalists who I trust. I read their opinions and I think they're really, really good. So I, it's not like uh, I'm not coming from a position where I just think like all journalists should be completely banned and they have, uh, all have like agendas and stuff. I think like when when big, especially like Kotaku, I think like Kotaku is the biggest one. When you have so many different people coming from different backgrounds and thinking in different ways and you don't have like a like a unified, um, like a codex, I guess, uh, like a philosophy on how you cover news. I think that's when you get in situations like this, where you know it's wrong. You know it's wrong, but you talk about it, even though you know you shouldn't. And I think this is how you burn contacts. And this will hurt them in the long run a lot. He can laugh about saying me looking at an informal NDA. And, uh, well... He's going to be looking... Uh, well, actually, no. He's not going to be looking at formal NDAs anytime soon. I think. I think it's very, very simple. Because I, I just think about myself, right? If I was in Valve's position, I would never send them a playtest, even under NDA. Because if they're going to try to scoot around, like, these regulations, uh, I think it's a... Uh, why would I? Why would I? Right? Like, if you're big enough that you already have coverage, why not work with people who, uh, who like, respect... Um, Respect the guidelines you've set. I am very sorry, but if I ever get a leak, you're not hearing about it. I am very, very sorry. Because I have heard, I can say this, I have heard certain things about certain things uh, I have covered on the channel. I have. But, um, I would never talk about them. Not even, not even in passing, nothing. So I think this is basically going to be a Kotaku situation. The argument they used uh, where they uh, press escape and agreement page disappears. And that's what I mean. They know this is wrong. They know this is wrong. Uh, these are decisions you make when reporting, and sometimes when uh, something comes down to some people may think I'm a jerk for doing this. You are still going to publish information. No one else is running. Uh, no one else is running. You are. Oh my god! <laughs> I thought I thought this would be it. This is a video game. You are not running a story that is going to change the world. If you want to break NDA. For someone, which by the way, we talked about this with the Mr. Beast situation. Uh, in situations where you actually must break NDA, you're not actually breaking NDA because so many different things that you would want to break NDA for are not protected under NDA. If someone is in danger, if like there is neglect, if there is stuff like that, that is not covered by an NDA. So of course, you should run stories that no one else is running. That is what a journalist should do. This is a video game. You've been given early access for a video game. You are not brave for running a story on a video game. And yes, I think people are absolutely right for thinking that you're a jerk. 
And the fact that you literally uh, try to immediately provide justifications for this when you have not agreed to any sort of legally binding NDA or even embargo. I am not sure what I would have done in this situation, but yes, technically The Verge had the right to do this no matter how mad people may be about it. Exactly. Legally, they are completely in the right. But that doesn't matter. Because they shouldn't have done it. I think they will. I think they absolutely will. F I don't think that they will face like sanctions. I just think Valve will not look at them the same. And in many ways, that's even worse. Uh, if you're if you're running like a business to business relationship, um, this will hurt you, because this is not a people are angry at you on the internet. This is a business to business relationship where, like I said before, both of these parties benefit. This is a win win situation. The Verge gets stuff to cover. Valve gets coverage. It is beneficial for both parties, but you have broken that mutual trust. And why should Valve now step out of their way uh, and say like, no, 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 we'll, we'll forgive you. Massive, massive L for The Verge.